Hello everyone to Adventure of the Words for Fiction Uncovered. I'm Rob and this is Kate. Hello. And this is our fourth piece for Fiction Uncovered on the topic of time. We've already discussed uh, what to do if you're short of time. Uh, is there such a thing yep. as summertime reading? And um, books that were published before that time. But today we're going to discuss some of our favourite short story collections. So we've got a selection here, um, we've each picked three. Um, if you listen to our podcast, you'll know that traditionally I cheat. I've actually stuck to the rules and I have only mm. picked three, which is very unusual That's to me. That's very impressive. Because um, I thought, well, we're doing it for Fiction Uncovered, so I should probably be good and stick to the rules. Um, but I'm gonna let Rob go first, and we're each going to take turns and uh, tell you about one of our three uh, short story collections that we'd like to share with you and uncover for you a little bit more, perhaps if you're bit short of time and you'd like to read a short story so Rob a short story collection I've gone for one that I've turned to time and time again which I've read since I was young and this is the complete Sherlock Holmes collection it's pretty hefty but this is because it does have also got the novels mm. uh, but you can read them individually and the short stories that I would recommend are ones I think you like as well yeah See, some of my favourites include from The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, uh, The Red-Headed League, mm -hmm. good one, yeah. uh, The Boscombe Valley Mysteries, The Five Orange Pips, and the one that terrified me as a child, The Adventures of the Speckled Band. Now, I can see one there as well, which was one of my favourites, which is The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle, mm. and that's got kind of a Christmassy theme. Oh, yes. um, mm. I remember when I was younger, I had a maybe a penguin or even a puffin collection that was just a selected adventures of Sherlock mm. Holmes which just picked out a few um, I don't know if they were from specific store yeah, kind of different yeah. books um, but just picked out a few of the shorter stories and it had maybe 10 of them in there mm. um, and I would just read individual stories and obviously when they were originally published they were published as the individual yeah. stories weren't they and I've I really enjoy those, mm. they're, they're good fun. Um, so I guess I'll pick something from a similar yeah. era. And so <laughs> my first one is also a big tome, which is, um, this is a centenary edition of the Collins Complete Works of Oscar Wilde. And um, within this, obviously, because it's a complete work, it's really big. So it's got all his poetry, his plays and so on. But of course, it also has his short stories. And... Um, for a book club podcast that mm. we do we read some of these short stories but some of my favorite short stories are the more kind of fairy tale style ones so things like the happy prince the nightingale and the rose the selfish giant which i know a lot of people our age would have read as a picture book um but also things like the remarkable rocket the devoted friend and a lot of these have almost a, a moral sort of aspect yeah. Yeah. um and also a sort of it's like quite ironic tone to them but then there are the slightly longer short stories if that makes sense like the canterville ghost or the picture of dorian gray which you can obviously buy as i guess a novella do you mm. see yeah i'd say it's a novella yeah. yeah so you can buy that separately as a novella but that's all within here and i i would still kind of class that as a short story but i think that no one can deny oscar wilde's genius but I don't know how widely read his short stories are anymore. And I loved them when I revisited mm. them recently. I think there's those little nuggets of wit and charm. His use of um, sort of verbiage is wonderful. So I'd highly recommend, you don't have to buy a big uh, sort of chunky collection with everything in it, although his poetry and his plays are beautiful as well, obviously, but his short stories are fantastic. So that's my first recommendation, it's uh, Oscar Wilde. My next choice is a bit more modern and it could be one of a number of books, but I've gone for mm. Stephen King. This one in particular is Full Dark, No Stars, and it's a sort of selection of there's a novella and a couple of short stories, mm -hmm. but I would say his most famous one is probably Different Seasons, which uh, most people yeah. will know because it's got The Shawshank Redemption in fantastic film. It's also got Stand By Me, which is a film that you only watched recently, actually. Yeah, classic film, but yeah, I had never seen it, thought it was really brilliant. Um, um, should probably read the short story. <laughs> well, I'd say that. It's also got Apt Pupil, which is made into a film, and also the, the body, and it's all to do with the different seasons of the year. 
summer in particular and things like that. But I would say don't pull off, if you're thinking, oh, Stephen King, he only writes horror, gore, blood and guts. Mm. Uh, no, he, it's sort of the twist. He does a little twist in things or just things that kind of creep you out. I mean, I know you haven't read much mm. Stephen King. No, and I think that's what's put me off about Stephen King because when I was younger, all I knew about Stephen King was it. <laughs> Okay. Um, because when we were yeah. little, but I think the film had just come out on video and it was the thing where mm. everyone was trying to see it without their parents knowing about it and uh, the scary clown. Tim Curry. Yeah, yeah. Tim, yeah Tim Curry, scary clown. Uh, and so ev like everyone I know was scared of clowns because of that mm. film. Uh, so it just it just yeah. didn't seem to be something that I wanted to read, and I I didn't actually know until quite recently that the Shawshank Redemption was based on a Stephen mm. King story even yep. i thought he was really just a horror writer so you would say probably start with short stories to read stephen king i'd say so and then you get the feel of it you'll be able to work out sort of what you like uh he's got a new short story collection coming out in the autumn i believe which i'm really looking forward to but then he dips in and out of different genres most recently mr mercedes was crime you've also got the dark tower series which is a sort of a a giant fantasy western series that goes mm. on. I've only really read the first couple. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's also one of the few sort of modern big authors that really yeah. does push the short story uh, collection still. So I give, so I give him a go. Mm. Well, we're going back to, um, back to UK and um, a bit further back in history again, because my next short story collection is a slightly smaller book, probably the, <laughs> the slimmest volume that we've had so far. And this is Tales from the Perilous Realm by J.R.R. Tolkien. And um, probably when people think of Tolkien, they think of The Hobbit and they think of Lord of the Rings. Um, and they might think of his um, stories in something called The Silmarillion. And that's a bit like um, the folk tales of the world of Lord of the Rings but he also wrote sort of fairy stories and in Tales from the Perilous Realm this has got the adventures of Tom Bombadil it's got a story called Leaf by Niggle oh, Smith hang on. of the, the, the name Tom Bombadil really I don't Alarm care. Bells. I don't <laughs> care. You don't. You thought he wasn't an interesting character when no. you when you read it, but I think he's lovely. Smith, Smith of Wotton Major and Farmer Giles of Ham. So these are four stories which Tolkien wrote. They're they're more like um, sort of very traditional English folk tales. They're not fairy tales as such. I wouldn't say, mm. but kind of traditional English folk tales. And I don't think very many people actually read these anymore because. Everyone knows of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Um, people probably mainly just watch the films um, and don't necessarily read the books as much anymore. And he's written these lovely folk tales which are kind of behind all the other things that he wrote. He was really a scholar, he was an academic and he studied uh, kind of Norse and Anglo-Saxon and Viking things and that's how he ended up building this incredible world because it was all built on the kind of um, real world mythology that he studied. Well I enjoyed The Hobbit so where does this fit in? So chronologically, where this this isn't in that world. I mean, the the oh, story, right. the adventures of Tom Bombadil. He's he's in that world, but the other stories uh, are right. not part right. of Lord of the Rings. They're separate folk tales. So right. you, okay. this isn't right. necessarily linked. You, you don't have to read Lord of the Rings to read these. Right. Um, the the first thing in here starts. Fairy is a perilous land, and in it are pitfalls for the unwary and dungeons for the overbold. Hmm. So it's it's more to do with that traditional English um, idea of fairy and sort of strange folk. So maybe if you've been watching Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell lately and the idea of English magic, actually this is something that is exactly that kind of idea. This is all about that kind of idea of English magic. Um, and it goes a lot further back than Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell, which is a fantastic book really really like that but yeah it, people have been writing about that for a long time so recommend these short stories 
So my final choice is one that isn't out yet. It's not out till September, and I haven't actually read it yet. But I went on the hunt for <laughs> new short story collections because I think you know it's one of the few new ones. So this is Lucia Berlian, a manual for cleaning women. It's out on the 10th of September. Now Lucia passed away in 2004, but she was very prolific through the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And this in particular here, which is by Picador, has got 43 of what they're calling her finest. So there's obviously more than 43. Mm. Um, it said it should be very witty, very funny, very clever, uh, lots to do with sort of friendship and I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, some of these are incredibly short, they're only about four or five pages long and when you think about it, trying to do a short story in only like four or five pages yeah. is really hard. It's very difficult. You have to get the reader invested in it very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this one, uh, it's going next to my TBR pile. It is, once again, Lucia Berlin, Selected Stories, A Manual for Cleaning Women, and it's out on the 10th of September here in the UK from Picador. Um, my final choice um, was published as a novel, but is written as four stories which interweave. And it does say that there are, it says there are four quarters to this novel they can be read in any story and the uh, any order and the story will work they're assembled here in one of 24 possible combinations um and i thought that was really interesting when i read it i read the stories in the order that they're printed in the book but having read them in that order i do think you could read them in a different order and it would give you a different impression and I think that would be a really interesting experiment to do. The book that I'm talking about is The Ghosts of Heaven by Marcus Sedgwick which is a really beautiful book. That is stunning. Um, yeah. It's got this amazing spiral kind of helix uh, design on the cover which goes back round onto the back cover as well. If I fold that out you can see that it goes right across the dust jacket as well and then it actually has blue sprayed edges on the hardback as well uh, if you're lucky you might be able to find an edition like this in the shop still um, but this was um, up for the recent young adult book prize but when I read it I felt that this was probably one of the most original, interesting science fiction books that I had read in a long time. It plays a lot with the way that time works and the way that we perceive uh, the way that culture develops. Um, you've got four different time periods in the book and uh, it's to do with how people are linked together through different time periods and across different um, sort of spaces. Um, the way that people have a kind of cultural link with each other and you don't even know oh, it. Oh, yeah. So there are certain things that just, certain things about the way people think that we just have in common and we don't necessarily realise that are just part of being human. Right. Yeah. Which is really interesting. And also, as it goes f kind of into the more technologically advanced section, it's also how we communicate that into the things that we build, which is really interesting. Um, it also looks at how we treat people who we perceive as other to ourselves. Mm -hmm. There's a lot about them and us. Uh, so uh, there's a section with different sort of um, primeval tribes. There's a section where uh, there's kind of witchcraft suspected. There's a section with a madhouse as well, which is really, really interesting. And there's these sort of spirals, which um, are the, a linking theme throughout. Mm. Um, and I think it's really fascinating. You could read each story individually and they that, would work as individual stories. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. You've read them all now. Yeah. Do you think you can read them in any order? I, I think you can read yeah. them in any order, yeah. I read them in one certain order, but I think you could read them in any order. I would actually quite like to read them in reverse. Because <laughs> mm. um, I read them 
uh, kind of oldest time period to newest. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Uh, but I would quite like to now try reading it with the most modern going back in history yeah. to the oldest worm. Because I think you would notice different nuances. I think you would want to read the whole collection, mm. but I think you could dip in and out of it and come back to the things. I think you could read other things in between. Right. But I really think it's extraordinary. And I think this is one of those books which I really want more people to read. Because I think it's beautifully written. I think there are really fascinating insights about human nature and the way that people relate to each other and the way that the human mind works. And not enough people have read it and I really, no, really think it's no. brilliant. I really want you to read this book. <laughs> go and read this book, please. It's really, really good. Marcus Sedgwick, The Ghosts of Heaven. Go and read it, please. It's my final well, there you go. There is our six choices. Kate, in particular, really, really want you to read wants this you book. to read really, that really one. Good. Yes. So that's it, that's uh, our suggestions <laughs> of what to read if you're perhaps short for time. Dip into a short story collection and before you know it you'll have, you'll have read the whole in the series. So uh, uh, I'm Rob, if you can follow me during the week on Twitter and on Instagram at Rob Jewer. And um, I'm Kate and you can follow me during the week on Twitter and Instagram at magic underscore kitten. You can also follow our blog on Twitter at Word Adventures. But of course, uh, we're here for Fiction Uncovered, so if you want to find out more, including the recent winners of the 2015 prize, then head on, head on over to fictionuncovered.co.uk, or you can follow them on Twitter at Fict Uncovered. That's F-I-C-T Uncovered for all the latest.